Hi, welcome back. In the last class, I gave you a brief overview regarding different classification of pumps. Definition of pumps, firstly the definition of the pumps followed by different classification of the pumps mainly into the gear type pump, the vane time pump and the piston pumps. After that, we identified the different characteristics, the geometrical features of these pumps. Now moving on, let us understand the pump performance parameters, which is very important to understand the various efficiencies related to these type of pumps. Today I am going to study different pump performance. Objective to study pump performance parameters like efficiencies, mechanical, volumetric efficiency, to identify pump selection factors, to solve problems on performance parameters. So, these are the objective of this class. First up, pump performance. The performance of a pump is a function of the precision for its manufacture. An ideal pump in is one which is having zero leakages. Right? So, it is impossible and that means zero clearance between the meeting parts. But actually working clearance intentionally should be given for lubrication purpose. So, the first efficiency which we are going to study is volumetric efficiency. Volumetric efficiency is indicating the amount of leakage. It, it involves considerations such as manufacturing tolerances, flexing of pump casing under design pressure operating condition. The ratio of actual flow rate to theoretical flow rate is defined as volumetric efficiency in terms of percentage. Next efficiency is mechanical efficiency. Mechanical efficiency indicates the amount of energy losses that occurs for other than the leakage. So, there are some other reasons like friction in bearing between the two mating parts, energy loss due to turbulent flow. So, Mechanical efficiency, it is the ratio of pump power output assuming no leakage to the actual power delivered to the pump. So, it is given by P Q T divided by 2 pi N T A, where P is the pump discharge pressure in Pascals, Q is the pump theoretical flow rate in meter per second. T suffix A is actual torque delivered by the pump, N is the pump speed in RPM. Mechanical efficiency in terms of torque, it is the ratio of theoretical torque required to operate the pump to the actual torque delivered to the pump. So, mechanical efficiency in terms of torque is theoretical torque to actual torque theoretical torque is equal to V by 2 pi. Actual and theoretical torque, how to estimate them? So, we can estimate by using this equation theoretical torque T is equal to V suffix D, the volumetric displacement into sorry the velocity into pressure P by 2 pi. So, actual torque is equal to actual power delivered to the pump by the pump speed. The overall efficiency, the overall efficiency will combine volumetric efficiency as well as mechanical efficiency. Overall efficiency refers to the overall performance of the pump considering possible losses 
including leakage loss and friction loss. So, this is the formula overall efficiency eta O is equal to eta V into eta M. So, if you combine these two formula, we get P into Q by 2 pi N T, where P is the power and Q is the discharge. Next, after studying the pump efficiency, we should have certain guidelines for selecting the pump for a particular application. So, we have to rely upon these guidelines. So, these are considered as pump selection factors. They are particularly used for selecting a pump for a particular application. So, the first one is the maximum operating pressure. So, that is the working pressure. So, low pressure pump, medium pressure pump and high pressure pump. So, maximum delivery. So, delivery is the head. So, delivery head whether it is 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 or in terms of meter. Type of control. So, controlling the pump is very important. It is online or offline. Pump drive speed. Type of fluid involved whether it is water or a viscous fluid like oil. Pump contamination tolerance. So, it depends upon filter whether the pump is fitted with filter or strainer or it is not at all filtered with them. Continuing with the selection factors, pump noise. So, pump noise ref refers to the vibration generated by the pump. Size and weight of the pump. So, size and weight of the pump is also important. Pump efficiency. Pump efficiency includes volumetric efficiency and as well as the mechanical efficiency and considering the both the overall efficiency. Cost, the cost of the pump is also an important factor for selecting the pump for a particular application. Availability and interchangeability. So, these are the uh, uh, spare parts management. So, available of the spare parts and interchangeable for obsolete parts for using the pump after repair. Maintenance and spares are very important. This is related to availability and interchangeability of spare parts. So, maintenance is not an issue because we are available with lot of interchangeable parts and spares parts are standardized. So, after looking into these selection factors, now let us move on to the problems related to this topic. The first problem what I am going to solve is related to mechanical related to the efficiency of the pumps. So, statement is like this an hydraulic pump has a displacement of 120 centimeter cube, its actual flow rate is 0 0.0015 meter cube per second at 900 rpm and 75 bars. If the actual torque input by the prime mover to the pump is 150 Newton meter, determine the overall efficiency of the pump. Also find the theoretical torque input to the pump for its operation. So, this problem I am going to solve on the board. Let us solve this problem systematically. So, let us identify the given parameters. Given is an hydraulic pump configuration, hydraulic pump configuration, right. So, according to the data, the displacement of the pump is 120 centimeter cube per revolution. We have to convert that into meter cube per revolution. So, which is equal to 120 divided by how to convert that centimeter cube is nothing but 100 cube meter cube per revolution. So, this is equal to point triple zero one two meter cube per revolution point triple zero one two meter cube per revolution. So, we have to convert that into centimeter from centimeter to meter cube per revolution. After that, what are the additional parameters given? 
the flow rate. This is the discharge and this is the flow rate. Flow rate is 0 0.015 meter cube per second. So, this is given and pressure is 75 bar, pressure is 75 bar. So, which is equal to 75 into 10 to the power of plus 5 Newton per meter square. And speed is 900 rpm, speed is 900 rpm. So, applied torque is 150 Newton meter. So, these are all the variables given. We need to find out the overall efficiency as well as the theoretical torque. So, these two we have to find out. Now, we can find out the volumetric efficiency Volumetric efficiency is nothing but Q actual by Q theoretical into 100. So, Q actual by Q theoretical into 100. So, we can further simplify this. So, what is Q actual? Q theoretical is equal to V p into n whole thing multiplied by 100. So, Q theoretical is V p into n. Now, we can substitute the values Q actual is 0 0.0015 meter cube per second, V p is 0 0.00012 and uh, 900 rpm, 900 rpm. So, we should convert this into RPS. So, it is in meters. So, please convert that into RPS. For that, we divided by 60, 900 divided by 60. So, we get the answer as 83.3 percent. We get the answer as 83. You can multiply this by 100. So, 83.3 percent. So, this is volumetric efficiency. So, volumetric efficiency is known because to find out the overall efficiency, we need to find out volumetric efficiency, we need to find out mechanical efficiency. So, this volumetric efficiency has been found out. Now, let us find out the mechanical efficiency. So, I will note down the values. So, volumetric efficiency what I got is 83 percent. So, 83 percent I have got. So, now I will find out the mechanical efficiency. Mechanical efficiency. So, mechanical efficiency to find out mechanical efficiency we have the formula beta is equal to. So, it is ratio of power, right. So, P into Q theoretical in the numerator divided by 
2 pi n t actual whole thing multiplied by 100, here theoretical and torque actual, right. So, you substitute the values, the power is, uh, pressure is 75 into 10 to the power of plus 5 into Q theoretical. So, we need to find out Q theoretical, Q theoretical as you know that it is equal to V p into n which I have directly substituted V p into n, right. So, Q theoretical is equal to V p into n, right. So, V p is 0 0.0001 into n is 900. So, n is 900 divided by 60 because it is in rpm. So, we want this in rps, okay. whole multi thing multiply by 100 in the denominator 2 into pi into what n. So, n is how much again 900 rpm. So, rpm is there we need to divide that by what we need to divide that by 60 into applied torque T A 150 Newton meter 150 Newton meter. So, after substituting I think this will cancel. So, no need to press 900 by 60, 900 by 50, they cancel each other and uh, you will get 95 percent 0.95 or 95 point 5 percent as the mechanical efficiency, right. So, mechanical efficiency is now found out. Now, how to find the overall efficiency, overall efficiency, overall F E efficiency, overall efficiency is multiply volumetric by mechanical. So, you get how much? 83.3, 83.3 multiplied by. So, mechanical efficiency is answer is 95.5 percent. So, 95.5 divided by 100. So, you get, I think you should not multiply directly, you can get the answer. So, you, you the answer is 79.5 percent, 79.5 percent. So, again 79.5 percent. So, volumetric efficiency is 83 percent mechanical efficiency is 95 percent. So, product of this is 79.5 percent. Now, let us find out the last unknown variable that is the theoretical torque. We know the mechanical efficiency can be expressed in terms of the torque that is mechanical efficiency is equal to the ratio of theoretical torque mechanical efficiency is nothing but the ratio of theoretical torque to actual torque is the ratio of theoretical torque into actual torque by 100. So, mechanical efficiency is what 95.5 theoretical torque given to is we have to find out and the uh, actual torque is 150. So, theoretical torque we get after cross multiplication as 143, 143 point Newton. 
So, answer finally, answer write down the answer volumetric efficiency 83 percent, mechanical efficiency 95.5 percent, 95 percent, overall efficiency 79.5 percent and the theoretical torque is 143.2 Newton meter. So, this is how you have to solve the problem systematically. Okay, we will continue to the next problem. After solving that problem, let us move on to the next problem. Problem, second problem, I will read out the statement of the problem. A pump has a displacement volume of 98.4 centimeter cube, will stop, it delivers 0.00152 meter cube per second of oil at 1000 rpm and 70 bars. If the prime mover input torque is 124.3 Newton meter, number 1, what is the overall efficiency of the pump? Number 2, what is the theoretical torque required to operate the pump? Now, let us solve this problem systematically on the board. Given is a pump with the following specification, right. So, the pump has the volume 98.4 centimeter cube per revolution. Since it is a centimeter cube, you have to convert that into meter that is divided by 100 cube. So, if you simplify that directly, I will write point four zeros. meter cube per revolution. So, just divide that by 100 cube. Q actual is equal to, Q actual is equal to, we have the value 0 0.00152, 0 0.00152 meter cube per second. So, this is a discharge. Next, Pressure 70 bar, 70 bar, which is equal into 70 into 10 to the power of plus 5 Newton per meter square. Speed 1000 rpm, 1000 rpm, speed 1000 rpm. Actual torque 124.3. One twenty four point three Newton meter. So, you have to find out the theoretical torque. So, what is the overall efficiency of the pump? That is also you have to find. So, you have to find the overall efficiency and as well as the theoretical torque. So, we will solve this one by one to find out the overall efficiency we need to know what is the volumetric efficiency and what is the mechanical efficiency right so we need to know what is the volumetric efficiency and what is the mechanical efficiency so i will call this as one so volumetric efficiency is given by Q actual by Q theoretical. Q actual by Q theoretical into 100. So, substitute the value, values here. Q theoretical again is given by V p into n. So, this is V p into n, right. You can find out Q theoretical V p into n. So, V p is 
0 0.000984 multiplied by n is 1000 rpm, so divided by 60, right. So, Q actual, so you substitute that, so Q actual is 0 0.00152 and Q theoretical is 0 0.000984 into 1000 by 60. So, after simplifying this, you will get the answer as 92.7 percent or 0 0.02, 0 0.09 or 92.7 percent. So, this is the answer. So, simplify this, you will get the volumetric efficiency. So, volumetric efficiency is available. Now, what about mechanical efficiency? Mechanical efficiency is the ratio of pressure into Q theoretical 2 pi n into T actual. But Q theoretical according to this is V p into n. So, you can cancel n and n and you can directly write P into V p into 2 pi into T actual, right. So, please substitute pressure is 70 into 10 to the power of plus 5 multiplied by V p, V p is as usual 0 0.000984. So, that has been cancelled in and in and cancelled. So, P into V p of course, 2 pi into applied torque 124, 124.3. So, you get the answer for this as 88.2 percent. So, this is what volumetric efficiency. So, now sorry this is mechanical efficiency. Now, multiply this and this that is put that values in equation 1, you will get the overall efficiency. Overall efficiency is what 92.7 multiplied by 88.2. So, it results in how much 81.8 percent. So, overall efficiency is 81.8 percent. So, you have found out these. Right. So, volumetric efficiency is 92 percent, mechanical efficiency is 88 percent and overall efficiency is 81.8 percent. Now, let us find out the torque, let us find out the torque for this problem. So, mechanical efficiency, uh, mechanical efficiency in terms of torque is T theoretical by T actual applied or actual, right? Whole thing multiplied by 100. So, mechanical efficiency is how much? We having mechanical 88.88. Just need to multiply. 88.2 is equal to into 100. T theoretical we need to find out. T actual is 124.3. So, cross multiply and divide by 100. We I think we have 100 here. So, if you take percentage, no need to take 100 here, right. So, directly multiply we get T theoretical is 109 Newton. So, the answers at the end you have to write the answers, answers what is mechanical volumetric efficiency, volumetric efficiency is 92 percent, what is mechanical efficiency, mechanical efficiency is 88 percent, what is overall efficiency, overall efficiency is 81 percent and along with that what is the 
theoretical torque. Theoretical torque is 109 Newton meter. So, this is how you need to solve the problem. Write down the main equation and try to solve all the sub equation. So, this is the main equation. Overall efficiency is equal to volumetric dependent on volumetric as well as mechanic. So, volumetric efficiency you please find out, find out the mechanical efficiency, combine these two and then you will get the resultant. So, this is how you need to produce, you need to have a path. So, with this we will move on to the next problem. Problem number 3 regarding pump efficiency. This is a peculiar problem. A pump is operating at 75.7 liters per minute and 12400 kilo Pascal. It has an overall efficiency of 0.83. It is driven by an electric motor with an efficiency of 0.87. How much power in kilowatt is the electric motor drawing? So, this is somewhat like an application problem, right. Let us solve this problem. Given is a pump configuration, you may be wondering I am why I am writing pump, pump, pump. Sometimes actuator will be given, sometimes pump will be given, student may get confused. So, better write down the element that is whether it is a pump or whether it is a actuator, right. So, a pump has been given right so before going to this problem i give i need to give you a information earlier in olden days uh, the pump we which we used to get was uh, two consist of two units uh, one was the motor and other one was the impeller so the motor was exclusively electrical based and the motor is exclusively mechanical based and these two were connected by means of couplings right the output from the motor was the input for the impeller and it was connected by means of coupling right so nowadays this is gone it's a direct drive so system which we call it as mono block in the mono block we have a compact unit inside a casing right which consists of motor directly driving the impeller. So, that is the scenario today. So, in this case, we add one motor, right. So, it is add a coupling and that was driving the motor. So, this is the which is scenario in this present problem. So, this is motor. So, this is mechanical coupling and this is the impeller. So, this is the pump. In today, we are having a mono block wherein a compact pump is available. So, this is the motor and this is the impeller, right. So, this is the coil, this is impeller. So, this is called as mono block. So, mono block have become popular today because it is compacted, right. So, let us move on to the problem. Come back to the problem, what are the given information? So, first is the amount of fluid discharge 75.7 liter per minute and uh, the power pressure is 12400 kilo Pascals and the overall efficiency 0.83% and 
the it is it is having a overall efficiency means the pump efficiency right so we can overall means this unit entire so the pump efficiency is 0.83% motor efficiency is 0 0.87 0 0.87 and power we have to find out the power input to the motor electrical power power input to the motor right we have to find out this available information we know that while solving the problem power generalize is equal to a function of q and p so q is discharge and p is pressure right so q is so i will q is discharge and p is pressure so in this case q is how much 75.7 but i want this in meter per meter cube per second right meter cube per second so 75.7 into thousand it is per minute liter per minute so divide by 60 so you will get it in meter cube per second into pressure is 12400 12400 so kilo means 10 to the power of 3 kilo pascal means 10 to the power of 3 kilo pascals so you can substitute and you can get the answer as after simplifying you will get the answer as 15.6 kilowatt so this is the power input to the electrical motor now this power is the power supplied by the motor okay this is the power supplied by electric motor this is fed into impeller right so what did the equivalent motor is need to be considered right so we need to consider the motor efficiency overall efficiency is equal to motor efficiency into pump efficiency right so we have to consider both the efficiency right so if you want the efficiency of pump what to do if you want the efficiency of the pump what to do we need to consider the power as well as the efficiency right so for that the power of electric motor is equal to power divided by motor into pump efficiency right so 15.6 divided by 0.83 multiplied by 
So, this is 21.6 kilowatt. So, the power available here is 15.6 kilowatt and the power available here to this pump is 21.6 kilowatt. So, this is the solution for this problem. Thank you. Okay. Finally, we come to the conclusion of this section. Summary, what all we studied? Pump performance parameters like efficiencies, what is the mechanical efficiency, what is the volumetric efficiency and if you combine these two, you will get overall efficiency. Pump selection factors include a list of factors which are required for selecting a pump for a particular application and quite a few problems were solved at the end illustrating the significance of these efficiencies. Now, the takeaway, so what a student can do after he completes this lectures, illustrate various performance parameters governing the operation of the pump like mechanical efficiency, volumetric efficiency, overall efficiency. Second takeaway, select pump for a particular application using the suitable guidelines that is what we call it as selection criteria. And third one, solve numerical problems related to pump efficiencies. So, these are the three takeaways from today's class. Thank you. In the next class, we are going to study different mechanical components.